Hey guys, really quick before we get started on this episode, if you think you might like a Fireside t-shirt or other cool Fireside swag, including back rubs, uh, be sure to check out our Patreon page and consider becoming a patron of the Fireside Tattoo Network. Uh, it helps us continue to provide free content to you guys, and then you get a little gift as well. The link is below. Please check it out. We would greatly appreciate it. Enjoy the episode. Welcome to the Fireside Tattoo Podcast. Sorry, did I yell that? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> you just grabbed your head. You just grabbed your head. Like... <laughs> the official podcast of the Fireside Tattoo Network. Go to tattooimprovement.com. Sign up for our newsletter. Uh, you can keep up with where we're going, who we're interviewing, when new technique episodes come out, stuff like that. Uh, you can also follow us on Facebook. We've been running a bunch of Facebook ads lately uh, just to get people to pay attention. It seems to be working. What we have not been doing a lot of lately is actually podcasting or putting out any content whatsoever, and I apologize for that. Uh, we've been busy uh, with a few other things, a few projects, some fireside related, some not, um, but we're going to get back on track. We're trying to line up some interviews now, and uh, in the meantime, I'm going to answer um, some viewer questions uh, probably for the next couple of episodes. These solo um, episodes seem to get a decent amount of attention, so I'm going to keep doing them. Uh, I think maybe because they're a little bit, they're more uninterrupted and I can think a little longer and not feel like I have to keep someone else in the conversation that sometimes they, uh, um, they maybe go a little bit deeper than some of our interview episodes do. Uh, another thing I want to apologize for is my lack of communication on the YouTubes. Um, I have always prided myself on responding to every single comment that everyone made uh, as long as we've been doing this show. And I just can't. I mean, there are just too many of them now. And it's not that I don't want to. It's not that we, any of us are ignoring you. But um, it's just gotten to where it would. It takes a lot of time. There are a lot of comments coming in. We have a lot of videos now. There are, what, 140, 150 videos or something like that now. So if they all get, you know, a, a comment a week, and that's 150 responses a week, so it's, and that's kind of the way that it's getting now. It's getting, it's getting kind of overwhelming, so um, please forgive us if we don't respond to every comment. We'll try to answer the questions that, are, um, uh, th that we feel like we should answer. Uh, we may not answer the questions that we've already answered before. Like if you're going to ask, what voltage are you running your machine at? I'm not going to answer it anymore. Just look back through the comments. It's already in there. But keep commenting. But keep commenting. Please don't stop commenting, yeah. Uh, what else? Any other stuff? Oh, we've got um, Nick Baxter's workshop coming July the 30th. Uh, one day workshop, plain air, no, not plain air, st um, still life painting workshop at my studio. Uh, it's a hundred bucks, super cheap to spend a day with Nick. He's, if you, if you don't follow him, I don't know why. Uh, he's, he's, he's an awesome tattooer. He's an awesome painter. He takes a really classical approach. And I'm really curious as to how he's going to make that work in a one day um, still life workshop. He, I guess he's going to take a more direct, like a la prima approach and not his kind of classical grisaille and glaze and glaze and glaze like we see a lot. So I'm really interested to be in the workshop myself. Um, if you're interested in that, go to tattooimprovement.com, click on, what do you click on? Uh, what's the button say? Uh, courses. courses. Okay, click on courses and it'll be under workshops there and you can register right there on the spot. Uh, if you need help trying to find some place to stay or anything like that, you can always reach out to one of us, reach out, uh, and I'll help you find some place nice that's really close. My studio is right in the middle of kind of midtown Memphis, so there's lots of restaurants and places to stay, Airbnbs and all that kind of stuff. All right, that's it. So today's subject, let me read this question. This came from, um, and I didn't make her, it was a lady, but I didn't make a note of her name. But she said that um, her tattooing is picking up a lot. My tattooing is picking up a lot. I'm doing a lot of large scale work, which is what I always wanted to do. 
the drawing and prep time is taking tons of my time and I have no free time to focus on improving myself, focus on painting, focus on drawing, uh, just feel like I'm treading water. Have you dealt with this? And if so, what, what, what would you do or what did you do to, uh, to correct it? So yes, yes, this is like the, from probably 2008 through 2013 or so, or maybe longer, I completely did that. I just treaded water. I had a, I had a clientele that was happy with what I was doing. And because of that, I just, I got kind of like content doing the same thing over and over. All I had time for was drawing, tattooing, and, uh, and all the stuff that go, goes along with that. I really didn't focus on getting out and improving. I didn't focus on exploring other mediums, on doing anything like that. And, um, and really it turned into a job for me. It turned into something I didn't really enjoy doing. Um, you know, my clients were happy with the results, but I saw other people around me, other people online really kind of escalating their work and my work was still looking the same. All the way down to like my photography, you know, like how I was photographing tattoos. I saw people like, using really clever ways of taking photos. And by the time I got through a day, I was just tired. I just wanted to snap a quick photo and post it and be done. And um, so it really it affected every single aspect of, of my life, of my tattoo life. Um, so I'm gonna, um, I'll tell you what I did, but I'm gonna start by challenging this idea that, that I think the vast majority of us have as, as tattooers. Um, you are not an hourly worker. You're not paid by the hour as a tattooer. And your response will most likely be, yes, I am. I'm $150 an hour or whatever your hourly rate is. And while we do use hourly rates to kind of give a gauge on what something might cost, uh, just so that we can kind of be on the same page with our clients, we're not an hourly worker in the sense that, uh, that we show up at two o'clock and we work until this time and then we're paid just based on the time that we put in. We are paid as tattooers for the results that we provide. It's a completely different thing. You can work for nine hours and if you provide crappy results, you are not $150 an hour tattooer, right? Uh, maybe contrast that with your front desk person. They show up when the shop opens, they clean up, they leave when the shop closes, and they're paid for whatever they can get done in that period of time, right? Uh, think about if you deal with health departments, if you're in the tattoo world, you probably do. They provide almost no real results. They're paid to show up and just kind of keep a status quo. They're just paid by the hour to show up and do these same uh, like menial tasks over and over and over. If let me say that this, this piece on my torso, I'm gonna to use it as an example. I paid Jeff Ensminger maybe eight grand, seven or eight grand for this tattoo over the time that, that we worked on it, uh, based on just a flat day rate. If he could have provided this same result in half the time, I probably would have paid double. And you can say that about probably any of your clients. Uh, they're not paying you for the hours that you're putting in, they're paying you for the result that you provide. So, so let's, let's Let's assume that I'm right on that. Stop arguing with me. Uh, we're, 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 paying, we're paid for results. Uh, so with that in mind, the first thing that I ask myself is what is tattooing like the single focus activity that I see myself being entertained with for the rest of my life? If so, what does it take to, for me to be the best tattooer that I can be? And I find that those are the things that I need to, uh, need to focus on. I'm going to read a little bit of this as I go, not read it, but just look at, look at reference. Um, so, so for me, if I think about a single focus activity, uh, this podcast has taught me a little bit. If I think about a single thing that I really want to focus the, most of my time on that entertains me, where I provide the most value, it is solving creative problems, whether that be um, it, with a tattoo machine, with a paintbrush, uh, drawing, doing whatever it is, and then simplifying in my own mind how I solve that problem. And then I've learned through this podcast that I like taking that simplification and then finding a way to like verbalize it, to teach it. So I love doing those three things. In order for me to do those three things effectively, I can't do everything else that needs to be done in my life for me to, to have a family and to run a business and to do all these things. Some of that stuff just has to go away. 
you can't multiply your output. You can't, for, for, to, going back to this, uh, this girl that, that's, that's starting to take on larger scale projects and feels like she's getting kind of stagnant. Um, there's no way to continue to improve your quality of work and continue to demand more money for your time or more attention for your time uh, and keep doing everything that you're doing. A lot of things just have to go away so that you can focus on the things that you're best at. Think about someone like, um, like Elon Musk, someone like uh, you know, Steve Jobs, Jeff Bezos, uh, any of those kinds of uh, guys, what's his name, Bill Gates. None of those guys have any more hours in the day than, than we have, than you have. But their impact, their level of productivity just is in the stratosphere. It's so far beyond what you do with your day and what I do with my day. It's not because they put more hours in, um, it's because they've learned how to focus their time on the activities that, that bring the most value to the most people, right? So on a much smaller scale with tattooing, the thing that brings the most value in my mind uh, to my clients is whenever I have free creative time to explore other mediums and bring those things to my tattoos. If I'm worried about scheduling consultations, scheduling appointments, ordering supplies, uh, making sure that the insurance is paid, making sure the lights are on at the shop. If those things are in my day-to-day -day wheelhouse of stuff to do, I can't focus on the important things. Anybody can do those other things. Not me. Anybody but me can do those other things. And so I, I think the way, that I, the way that I first approached it whenever I, um, when I started thinking this way is I started writing down, I just got a, a yellow legal pad, just like this one, and I started writing down every single thing that I did with my day. Just, and I would recommend if, if you wanna take this approach, I, I'll, I'll try to give you a step-by-step. -step. Write down literally, just keep it by your side, or if you're, if you're better with a phone, keep, you know, use your phone and, you know, but every single thing that you do for the day, just write it down and choose a period of time that you think you'll actually do this. If it's three days, make it three days. If it's a week, make it a week. The longer the better because you'll get a better idea. Um, I did it for a month. Uh, you'll get a better idea of just what all you do on a day-to-day -day basis. And what you'll find is that very, very little of it directly is directly related to you being a better tattooer. A lot of it is just the grind. It's just busy work. It's just crap. And what I do once I had that list down is I go through and I, um, I ask, myself, uh, ask myself a few questions. Uh, the first one I ask myself is, what would happen if I stopped doing this activity? Not if I pawned it off on someone else, but like what if that activity just went away? What would be the downside? What would be the effect? And what I found is that probably 20 or 30% of the stuff that I did every day was for somebody else's benefit, was because I had just deemed it important at some point in like in the past and have stuck with it forever and now I just do it for the sake of doing it and it didn't serve any real purpose and maybe in the short term there's some people that are like well what the hell why did you quit doing that but no oh well I mean I, that, that was something I just couldn't do anymore I have to focus on this now um, beyond that I would um, sorry I gotta I gotta look at this um, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, go line by line. Why am I doing this? So I stopped doing much of what I did. Oh, the second thing I asked myself, could someone else do a better job of this? I'm terrible at like keeping up with ordering supplies, at, uh, at scheduling appointments. I had appointments, for example, coming in from Instagram messages, Facebook messages, email, the tattoo improvement website, text messages, people like, hey, when's your next available time? And what I was doing was saying, oh, let me get back with you. Uh, I have to look at my calendar and I'm driving down the street and I never think of it again. Those kinds of things eat up so much useless time and, and what I did to replace that is I just switched over to a scheduler, to Square Scheduler, so everyone just has access to my schedule and they can see my availability and they just click their time, make their deposit, and then they get a text message reminder. 30 bucks a month, completely automated, probably saved me $1,000 a month in productivity time. Uh, so there are tons of tools out there to, to, to do those, those types of things. Um, so, first question, can this just go away? If it can't just go away, could someone else do it? And if so, who? Who's better at doing it than me? A lot of it can be automated. A lot of it can go to like virtual assistants. I just paid a virtual assistant and we were trying to get, um, what were we trying to get? Testimonials or like stuff for the website, right? I paid someone in the Philippines $100 to go through 150 some odd videos 
tens of thousands of comments. I have no, I have no idea how many comments. Copy and paste them into a Word doc with the person's name and what it was in reference to and email it all to me. The girl did it in a weekend for a hundred bucks. Holy crap, isn't that crazy? But you can do, I mean, they're like, that kind of stuff is, it's so easy to get that kind of stuff done. You just have to like decide what you don't want to do anymore and find someone that can do it. And it's not very expensive a lot of times. Um, so once you get those two things out of the way, what I did beyond that was I split the rest of my activities into, and this comes from my, uh, uh, strategic coach, my business coaching setup, I split them into two different types of activities, uh, focus activities and buffer activities, right? So buffer activities are like preparation activities. If you have to order supplies, if you have to answer emails, if you have to, you know, grocery shop, if you have to do all those things, those are the activities that put you in the position to be productive. My focus activities are creating content for Fireside. This is a focus activity right now for me because it creates real value to you guys, to my clientele. Um, tattooing is a focus activity. Uh, drawing for my tattoos I consider a focus activity because it, it directly translates to something that's like profitable for me, um, that, that provides value to my customers and to my friends and, and things like that. And then I try to split those activities completely where they have nothing to do with each other. If I'm doing buffer stuff today, if I'm doing like gopher air and stuff today, I don't do focus stuff. If I'm doing focus stuff, I don't do buffer stuff. I split those things up and you find how that works for you. For me, sometimes it's morning buffer, afternoon focus. Sometimes it's a full day of focus and a full day of buffer. But uh, splitting those two things up allows you to intently focus on the important things because all the other stuff is out of the way. The, uh, the real danger in, in, in mixing those two things and not really planning your day uh, in, in a way that you, that you set specific goals and get them out of the way is that you're in this like perpetual, I don't know, like no rush for anything to ever get done because tomorrow is a work day too and the next day is a work day too it's just like every day is a checklist day of crap that has to get done whereas if you have a focus day and you know this is my last focus day until wednesday all this stuff has to be done because i don't have any more time to do focus activities until next wednesday think about it kind of like um, the day before you go on vacation so like how productive are you at the shop or at work or whatever you do the day before you leave town you are cranking through so much shit that has to be done. And it's because there's a true deadline there. You have to get it done. So if you set yourself up where those days, where every day is like that to you, where like these things have to be done today because I don't have another buffer day. Tomorrow is all focused stuff. I can't order supplies tomorrow. I have to order them today. Um, then you, um, you, know, you find yourself getting things out of the way. The final thing I'll say is take time to recognize those accomplishments for every single day. This was, was beat into my head a little bit and I was really hesitant to, to adopt it. But I've got a bad habit and I know a lot of you guys probably do too, is you finish something and instead of recognizing that as an achievement, as great, I've, that's something I've accomplished, you recognize it as just another thing out of the way so that you can get to the next thing on the checklist. So when you never really take the time to recognize anything as an achievement, you end up in this, um, uh, with this kind of like perpetual like scramble work mode. You never take time to say like, uh, to, to, to have a little free time and say, man, look at all this stuff that I knocked out today. So I actually write down my achievements by the week, even, no matter how small they were. If I ordered supplies, I ordered supplies this week. Check, that was awesome. Why is that a good thing? It's a good thing because now I can do more tattoos and it's one less thing that I have to worry about. Uh, you know, what's my next step in this, in this action if it's not the end of that achievement? And then you can move on from there. Um, one more thing that I kind of skipped over is the idea of, um, we talked about focus and buffer. We didn't talk about free time. We normally, as tattooers, I'm thinking of Yogi Barrett right now, uh, grinding every single day. We, we tend to take free time as we think of days off as a way to reward ourselves for like working ourselves into the ground, right? So just like work until you can't handle anymore and then take a couple of days off. This idea that was introduced to me that I've been implementing a lot lately is, um, is free time as a precursor to success uh, instead of a reward for having already done work. 
And in the creative field and tattooing and painting, it, I've found that it's so, so valuable because um, that free time is where you really rejuvenate. My free time is sitting in here in front of a canvas and painting. And I start problem solving just like, uh, I, you know, out of um, because I'm relaxed, because my buffer days were yesterday and my focus day is tomorrow and today is just time, is just a free day. And free day is anything that's not work related to me. I've got a guitar sitting right here. I've got a painting sitting right here. And I just go 30 minutes paint, 20 minutes guitar, 40 minutes paint, 10 minutes guitar, and just go back and forth. And I find that it rejuvenate, rejuvenates me so much that I that it that it fuels my focus days like my tattoos are better because of it the content on this show is better because of it and, it, and when i find myself in a grind just constantly working for day in and day out this show gets really stagnant stagnant my tattoos get stagnant i have no like creative juice nothing comes to me i don't you know i just feel like there are times that i that, that i've really kind of worked myself down and i and it's a monday night and we're supposed to podcast and i'm like Shit, there's literally nothing else I have to say about tattooing. In the, in the whole time that we've been doing this show, I've said everything that I possibly have to say about tattooing. But you let me spend a full day painting in the studio and I'll have like a full page of ideas for podcasts, for shows, for techniques, for questions to ask people we're gonna interview, all kinds of stuff. It's just <clears throat> backing off and thinking of free time as a way to like, fuel up your tank so that you have that creative energy to get through the day. So I know that's kind of an abstract and roundabout way of answering the, this question, but I think if you, if, if there's the biggest lesson that I could say to, to take from it is if you're grinding, trying to put in great tattoos and you're doing large scale work and you feel like all you have time to do is draw for the large scale work and do the large scale work, uh, and there's no more time in your day for free time or in your week for free time to, to do these other things um, you've got to step back and write down everything that you're doing and some of it has to go away if you're gonna multiply your output you can't multiply everything that you do you multiply the things that you're best at the things that you're most interested in and someone else has to do the other stuff and, and the great thing about that is that someone else likes doing that other stuff my wife loves booking trips like to go to whatever if we're doing a convention or, or whatever i don't want to sit and look at hotels and airlines and all that kind of crap and try to find the best deals she thrives on that stuff she likes it so great she can do it and then i'll just you know go so that's it thank you guys i hope that helped and uh um i will try to uh, don't hold me to this, but there may be a link under here where I'll try to write this stuff out uh, where you can step-by-step step kind of make your list, split your activities into different types of days, along with the questions that you might ask yourself to see what activities can go away altogether, and then maybe a couple of like the tools that I'm using to automate some of that stuff, like the square scheduler and, and things like that. You know, if you, if you work in a shop and you have a front desk, you don't have a lot of those issues that that I have being in a private studio. You know, maybe they do all your ordering for you and, and do book all your appointments and consultations. Uh, but if you are in the boat where you're doing everything in your business, uh, some of that stuff has to go away. It's gotta become automated. Tattooimprovement.com, sign up. Thank you guys, we'll see you next time.